Okay, good morning, everybody. Good morning. How are all of you? Good. All okay? Good. Okay. Good morning to all the e learning students. Good morning to all the online students. Welcome to class. Uh, it's good to have each one of you here. Okay, we are. Uh, drawing close to our uh, uh, to the end we're on the 12th week of our class today and we we're, we're continuing on with special issues in counseling especially those particular issues in counseling and the next topic that we are doing is counseling the abused okay all right so what did we do last week Sorry, a yeah, practical session, but what what practical session did we do on on marriage, marriage and family, and the class before that was mental health. Yes, mental health. Yes. Okay. So we'll be looking at three more topics. That is counseling the abused. Uh, grief counseling and suicide over the next two weeks and last week we'll be doing on ethics okay all right okay so counseling uh, the abused now when we look at this entire topic uh, of counseling uh, the abused the first thing that we really need to understand is what are the different types of abuse or or basically what is what is abuse so what do you think abuses harassment okay coercive behavior forcing okay what do you think is abuse it's a violation of of uh, of something that is personal to you right it's a violation of something or it's a disrespect of something that is um, uh, that, that is somebody else's okay all right okay so we're going to look at different kinds of uh, abuse um, there are many different types of abuse and uh, commonly known forms of abuse which what do you think are some known forms of abuse physical abuse okay mental abuse emotional abuse then sexual abuse anything else oh, okay that's a personal this you're not violating somebody else right that's a personal uh, that's more on uh, subs yeah it's also a part like abuse but we're looking at how no a person abuses somebody else Social abuse. What is social abuse? Oh, okay. All right. Oh, okay. All right. Social abuse on media platforms. Okay. <laughs> okay. They're saying hacking somebody's personal information. Okay. Uh, yeah. So there, there are many kinds, and there's also domestic violence. Yeah, domestic violence. So there are many, and we'll go through a few few of them. Uh, it's it's important to know what kind of behave that any kind of behavior that deliberately causes harm uh, or upset to somebody is what is considered as abuse. All right, some uh, somebody causes deliberate harm that is intentionally when they know that um, it can hurt somebody that is called as uh, abuse. Now, abuse can happen in any stage of life. Financial abuse. OK. It can happen in any stage of life, right from childhood uh, to through adulthood and even after that. Have you heard of elder abuse, right? Older people, people abusing the elderly. So it can come in different forms, and it can come from different people also. So someone can use physical violence. They can use emotional violation. They can use cruel words. 
to abuse. Okay, now all types of abuse can cause either physical pain or psychological pain. All right. Okay, so that's that's what you would look, and it of 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 course it takes a lot of time to heal. So um, when you deliberately undertake um, certain actions that are harmful, that when you deliberately do certain actions that are harmful, that can be morally wrong, okay, like in the sense of sexual abuse, uh, it is a form of misusing your own power to harm somebody else. That's what it means. You, you're, you are, uh, you find yourself in a powerful position, and that's why you are bringing about. Uh, harm towards somebody else. So I, I think it's important to remember that no one deserves abuse or no one asks for abuse. Sometimes when you talk to people, they say they deserved that beating. You know, they behaved in such a way that they deserved it or they were asking for it. Right? You would probably would have understood or heard these terms. So no matter how much um, uh, whatever the issue is, harm towards a violation towards somebody is wrong. Okay? All right. So let's explain a few uh, types of abuse. So I'm on page. No, no, I'm not sharing anything. Uh, I'm, I'm just, uh, the, I'm on page, uh, what's page 45. Okay? Page 45. So um, the first one we can look at is physical abuse. So what is physical abuse? It is deliberately harming or hurting someone through any kind of a physical contact. Or it, is, it can be violence. Uh, any kind of a violent behavior is called as physical abuse. So anyone of any age, sexuality, gender uh, can be affected by physical abuse. So this type typically comes from someone within your own space or your own environment, like a family member or someone that is known to you. OK, what are some of the physical abuse uh, that you can see? Could you hitting? That's, that's later. Verbal is different. Physical is? Mm. Biting. Mm. Anything else? Okay. Burning. Using. Giving. Yeah. Basically, giving any kind of pain that's physical. So you can, like, it can be kicking, throwing objects, burning, huh? Scalding. Okay. So all of that is what you would call as uh, physical physical abuse okay now uh, rem you should remember that this this kind of physical abuse um, can lead to uh, it's just not the physical pain that a person goes through right it can be uh, a, a lot of other things that that happen what else happens apart from physical pain it's just not about physical pain right Okay, like what emotions come up? Okay, anger, sad, huh? tears. Okay, so there can be a lot of shame also because with the physical abuse, there's a lot of verbal abuse as well, right? So there can be, um, they can experience fear, isn't that it? There's a there's a lot of fear that actually keeps them away from taking any form of help. All right, and other uh, other kind of uh, feelings could be a sense of shame, a sense of guilt, um, and also a sense of isolation. They may tend to isolate themselves from others because they do not want others to know. Okay, uh, and and that's what keeps them in that loop. And often you will find that physical abuse is unreported. Why do you think it's unreported? Unreported. That is, it doesn't go. Okay. Why would you not report abuse, physical abuse? 
Okay. Okay. It's generally because of fear. The fear that if I go and tell someone else, that uh, more than that, the, the, there will be, and if the person, the abuser gets to know, physical violence will be even greater, even more. Right? So often, because they don't have any space to go away, they have to come back to their own physical space, and that's why they get trapped in that uh, sense of abuse. Okay? All right? Emotional abuse. What's emotional abuse? Correct. Okay. So in physical abuse, you can see injuries or marks or things, right? But in it's easier. It's easier to identify, yeah, because it's visible. But whereas in a uh, emotional abuse, it's not that visible. Yeah, scars are yes, yeah, scars are a, a lot more inside. So what happens is a lot of people who experience emotional abuse feel that others won't believe them, especially if they are, let's say, if they are, uh, if they have a partner who's extremely nice to those outside. Right? It's a gem of a person on the outside, but when they're at home, they can be very strong uh, abusers, you know, emotionally using uh, words or blackmails. So uh, this generally, again, this is a show of power. Every form of abuse is a show of power, saying that I have more power over you to bring you down to my um uh, to 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 my control all right so it's it's basically a, a, a way of power and how how is it generally done it's done through threats through criticism to manipulation name calling uh it can be through blackmails emotional blackmails um uh, any kind of actions or gestures demeaning words all of that is what is uh, emotional abuse. Now, emotional abuse often can be put into, you know, people can become very, very aggressive, okay, or they can be, they can actually dismiss, be dismissive, or they can deny. They actually can deny that they said something after that they have said it, okay. And you would have heard the word gaslighting, okay, gas gaslighting. The word gaslighting means you are. Uh, what do you do? You actually light the gas. No, you put the fire and say that you're not the one who put the fire on. That's what gaslighting is. Right? I don't know how that came there. It's there, but I, I wasn't the one who did it. So that's, again, another form of uh, form of abuse. Okay? The next uh, is, yes, uh, sexual abuse. Sexual abuse. Okay. Uh, sexual abuse is any type of... Um, uh, sexual assault or uh, uh, it needn't only be violence it's basically assault to uh, of an adult to a uh, someone who is a minor all right who doesn't have uh, doesn't give consensus to that to to a sexual encounter so it's generally it can range from unwanted touching to even exposure to any kind of sexual sexually explicit material like pornographic material uh, sexually explicit movies um, and any of that so it can move it can it can be straight from just touching to coercive sexual contact to uh, any form of explicit viewing of any sexual material okay are we all here people are dreaming away you're here okay all right now um, so, so often the victims are generally, generally, especially when you look at child sexual abuse, they're people who are below 18 years of age. Okay. So here also, anyone can be a victim of sexual abuse, and uh, even even forms of some form of rape also is known as sexual abuse, sexual assault. Okay. Now. Uh, what do you think are the effects of uh, being abused sexually? <clears throat> okay, depression. Okay. Fear, shame, yes. Shame and guilt is one of the biggest 
um, uh, psychological uh, symptoms of of sexual abuse. Okay. Some what is loss of identity? Okay, and anger on other people. Okay, wonderful. Anything else, Francis? Isolation, Francis. What are what what happens when someone is sexually abused? What are some of the effects of sexual abuse? Very good. They find it very hard to trust people. There could be difficulty in managing, maintaining relationships because of of forms of sexual abuse. Okay. There'll be a different way that they behave. Give me an example. Okay, they isolate themselves. They may be in depression. Okay, so you generally what you're saying is you can observe from their behaviors. Okay, all right. Okay, uh, I know I have not put in domestic violence here, but but you know I think I'll just just talk about it a little bit. Now, domestic violence is also known as domestic abuse. That is, there is threatening behavior uh, within a relationship, someone who is in a relationship. And this could include family members. It could include uh, people who are not even in romantic relationships. They don't have to be in romantic relationships. Like it can be to a parent, to a child. So. Uh, there can be, but generally in friendships may not be. It's generally you you would you would find it in um, uh, when we say non-romantic relationships is what we mean by let's say within a family member, like husband, wife, uh, or parent, child, or parent, uh, uh, parent and pa uh, sorry, yeah, uh, like an elder person and a and a child, uh, siblings. Right, all of that is it's there. It can it can also be among say, romantic partners also. Okay, all right. Now uh, these violence that is domestic can have psychological uh, as well as uh, physical impacts, similarly as physical abuse and uh, uh, emotional abuse. Okay, uh, it, it, again these. This kind, domestic violence, is also, again, goes unreported. Why, again, does it go unreported? Yeah, because, yeah, because you're, you're exposing someone. Ex excellent, yeah? And that's, that's some of the reason why they are not bought out in the open. OK? All right. Next one, just also talk about uh, neglect. Now, neglect could be where there is the care that is meant to be given to someone is not adequately given now neglect can be to it can be to a child it can be even to an older like an elderly person when they need the care maybe when they need food they need clothing uh, they need medical care they need uh, assistance when all of that is withdrawn, that is not given, that itself can lead to uh, a sense of neglect. Neglect. Okay. Um, so it doesn't mean, and I want you to understand this, that one part, you know, when a parent doesn't give a child something they want, like a new computer or a cell phone or, or anything that is called neglect. Okay. It's, it's to the, towards their basic important needs like food shelter education love care all of that is what we're looking at basic emotional needs okay clear any thoughts any questions no questions all clear okay all right so we'll just look at, uh, I know this section is not there, but just want to quickly bring about how abuse can affect somebody. Now, it's important to know that abuse can have a significant impact on mental health as well as a person's well-being. And it's not just at the time that the abuse is happening, but it can have a lasting uh, impression 
uh, even even after that so that can that can also take place there is a a lot of uh, um, uh, long term impacts that can happen as a result of a result of any form of uh, form of abuse uh, repeated abuse or even single time abuse can lead to some kind of mental health issues like depression anxiety other kind of mental health disorders or right? even personality disorders can um, can be experienced so some some survivors of abuse go through trust issues okay they go through flashbacks what are flashbacks what do you think of it yeah they they maybe it comes back in their dream or you know they they picture the the entire form of abuse <clears throat> over and over again okay they may have problems in forming good relationships every time they come with a relationships they they're not able to trust so that they have trust issues and they have uh, suspicions or they may have uh, a, a very poor sense of self esteem and confidence that makes them feel that nobody can love them so they have a lot of trouble in finding contentment in being able to be happy even in situations that they are in so their their relationships are being affected their mental health is being affected the way that they feel about like you said sense of identity gets affected there is low self esteem that that comes about okay and it could also lead to francis it could also lead to other issues like self harm you know what self harm is self harm huh no suicide is not self harm so suicide is is a is one like self harm but what we are looking at self harm is not with an intent to die it is an intent to relieve pain so it is yeah you're right you know cutting superficial cuts but it is not an intent to die it's an intent to uh, to alleviate that pain substances yes addictions substance uh, substance abuse is is one thing that is often seen all right this is what you would you would find um uh, in uh, general uh, general fallouts of an abuse okay all right um okay so how do we help what can we basically do to help um so okay let i and i think i want to open this out as a question okay someone comes in and tells you that they and this is let's say you know the person you know the person that they're talking about okay a well known person or a very respectful person but let's say uh, it's a child or it's a wife that comes in and tells you or a husband that comes in and tells you that their uh, that their parent or their uncle or their aunt or uh, you know someone is abusing them what what is the first position that you take what should you be what should you be doing okay okay so i'm going to give you an example okay i have come to class today suppose i have a nice black mark on my eye okay what would you say what happened okay all right and i may say i mean i I'm, i'm not talking to you about, about students but let's say one of you came and asked ma'am what happened so i'll say you know such and such person hit me on my eye what's your next thing ah, let's go <laughs> let's go hit hit the person back huh? <laughs> what francis okay so mm. uh, 
Yeah. No, I, you don't look at counselor. You look at people who are. Okay, so I said I got angry and I I burnt the dosa today. I said he burnt. I burnt the dosa today. He hit. Huh? You got there. That's all. Over. Done. Hey, let me go on my way. Yeah. Okay. So you so you mean to say that? Okay. So what will you tell me then? Okay. Okay. So you will ask me about all of that, is it? Okay. If I'm willing. Okay. If I'm not? Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Okay. You'll appreciate that I have told you what it is. Okay. Yeah, I know. I don't think they can hear. No one is saying anything also. Okay. This is open also for the uh, online students. My students here are all talking. I don't know if you can hear. But uh, if you all can also talk, that will be great. OK, so okay, I'll give you another example. A child comes to you okay, and tells you, let's say you know the child's, the, the abuser, whoever. You know the child's abuser very well. okay, And the child has come and told you is that they are, they have been, you know, somebody touched them. What is the first thing you do? You'd say, really? OK. What does that communicate? Exactly. Right? So when you say, really, or are you sure? Huh? Seriously? Or is it? Yeah. What are you doing is you are not paying attention or believing what the person has said. So what do you think will happen then? Absolutely. They are not going to. Absolutely. They will. They, the very fact that they took the courage to come in and tell you shows that they wanted some help. Right? So if you uh, dismiss it, if you don't, if you like question, then it, it may put them at a back foot and really not want to share anything with you. So that's something that you can always uh, look into at a later point of time. But yes, your the first response that you would do is to believe them and say and appreciate them for the fact that they came in and told you. Huh? Yeah, so appreciate the fact that they told you and uh, confirm that what they are feeling is absolutely valid. Okay, maybe they're fearful or whatever they're going through, it's absolutely valid. Okay, so that is very, very important for you as a counselor to do. Okay, got that? Now, the other thing that you said, yeah. Can we give that 
Okay, so when someone's actually coming and telling you, you can be empathetic, but you also have to get to, I don't want to say what it is, but what's the next step? Huh? Investigate. Maybe you're not in a position to investigate. When someone is telling you that they are being abused, what would you as a, forget a counselor, as a normal human being, uh, you've done all that. They've told you all of that. What's the next step? Who? The abuser? What are you going to tell them? Comfort and empower, right? Empower the. So, what do you think would happen? Uh, unless, no, no, unless, of course, you are in a setting that, you know, you're in a legal setting, it may not be very safe to do that. Why? Yeah. You, see, your, your, your focus is, first of all, on the abused. Your focus is on them to, what is it? To, what, yes, believe them. Secondly, the most important thing is to keep them safe, right? If someone is bashing your friend, will you say, you know, I comfort you, be blessed, you know? Exactly, right? Isn't it? The first thing you will do is find a way to get out from that place. What is the way that you can be rescued from that abuse that is happening? That's the first thing you need to do. And that's what you are getting into a conversation with. How can they move away from that place of abuse? Now, it can be very different for, um, uh, what do you say, a, a different kind, set of people. Let's say a child is being sexually abused. How would you go, go with it? Okay, so you okay, you've got to be careful when you say next time if it's happening, which means uh, no, not only that, the fact that it can it can go on and that you have not done anything. There are so many things that can be done from this episode to the next episode to avoid that. Hmm. Okay. Why? Why? Mm. She's a minor. Yeah? Mm. Okay. So let's say if it's a child, remember any kind of abuse, sexual abuse towards a child is a criminal, uh, it's a criminal uh, offense, right? Which means as uh, as someone who brings something like that to you, you are actually bound to report. You are bound to report, right? You have to take, because if not, at any point of time, that, you know, uh, let's say someone else finds that out, you, uh, you, you, will, you will be charged because of the fact you'll be responsible, because you knew and you didn't take action, right? So what are some of the steps to do that? One is when a child is being abused, the first thing is to 
find out from the child who are a few people who they can trust. OK? So you elicit from the child who are people that you can trust. All right? And once that is so, ensuring that, uh, you know, letting the child know that you will need to get the support and help from these people who they can trust. Right? So if it's a parent or if it's a teacher or whoever, getting their support and bringing them into this information that this child is being. Uh, and you don't have to do it to many pe with many people, maybe one or two trusted adults that you can get support from. All right? And then there are ways that you can, uh, uh, rather than you, ensuring that the responsible adult, maybe it's the parent or whoever is in charge, uh, brings about a complaint to the legal system. Okay, so it is up to you to do this first part of reporting is getting the any other member of the family or uh, the environment uh, spoken to so that they could do what is what is needful. Never talk to the abuser. Okay, because it can it can bring about a lot of issues at the end of it. Okay, clear. Yeah. You shouldn't. You should never talk to the abuser. Right? I, I, I'm talking about, let's say, if it is something like a child. Let's, let's look at another case, like violence, physical violence. You have two adults. OK, so there again, the first and foremost thing is talking with them to keep them physically safe, that they don't go back. Uh, they don't go back into the same environment where they are being abused. So devising a plan alongside with them to ensure that they get support or they get help or they are moving away from that place. So one of the things is getting support. If need be, especially you know, if the physical violence is continuous, is regular, then maybe getting the help of other people, involving other people, maybe like the church, pastors, or beyond that. I mean, first the family, then the past, then, you know, if that's a church that's involved, and if not, then the legal system. OK, so what you're, what you're basically doing is to help them to stay safe. OK, got it? Any questions? Any questions? No. Yeah. yeah. You said uh, we should not listen or we should not talk to that abusers. What if uh, that abusers did something like not that much, but something, any small kind of things with any person, woman? So he will come and he will tell big things. What if it will become big fight and will not listen to that abusers because he didn't did that much? But he's making that things big. The that abuser person. or the abused? The abused. Abused is yeah. saying uh, is saying something much more than what happened, is it? OK. Now, see, it, like I said, every situation may be different. right? So how you can actually, like, like for example, how is it that one of the ways generally that you can understand is, let's say the abuse comes and says, OK, this person did this and did this, 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 this. OK? And they will say, you call and ask, right? Or you take, you take charge and get to the police. That's why you do not take that responsibility of going to the police or doing anything, because you are empowering them to do it themselves, right? So if you are getting the abuse to make a, let's say, a larger complaint, uh, they have to have enough evidence for what they are saying, right? Let's suppose the abuse just maybe, uh, let's say, hit them once, but the abuse says that, you know, he took a knife and he stabbed me or whatever, right? 
so what happens is they when you when when you're empowering them to do that you you need to get them to bring evidence and without evidence there isn't a case right so if something like that happens it's important to empower them so that they will be able to report to a higher authority all right so that's why i said so a lot of this may be different in the way that it presents itself but uh, each of each of these things need to be done with a lot of wisdom okay now even as they are talking to you it's important to understand details of the abuse what's happening how is it happening what's the frequency of it happening how many people know have they sought help earlier um uh, uh, you know is it safe for them to go back so asking all of these questions is very important to get them the support that they that they need okay um yeah okay. it's the news name and yeah. Like, for example, look, let's look at it in a setting of a church. Um, there is there's some kind of physical abuse that's happening between, let's say, a parent or a child or, a, uh, let's say, a husband and wife, suppose. And one member comes to you, okay? They may tell you, please, you know, I'd like you to talk to such and such person. They've given you the permission, right? If they've given you the permission, then it's okay to, to discuss it. Suppose they say, don't tell, because if you tell, then I will get... I will get into a deeper problem, all right? So then you may need to devise another plan. One is, like we said, is safety. If a life is in danger, it is safe. It is safety. And once that's, that happens, and let's suppose it's a wife, she moves away from the place, she's staying at another place, then definitely the husband is going to ask, why are you going or whatever, right? So you're empowering her to speak up and say that, you know, unless and until you get help, I'm not going to come back. Or until and unless you get that kind of support, you know, or if this happens again, I will report this to such and such person. So every case may be very different in its thing, but it I'm just giving you different scenarios of it happening. So then you need to use a lot of wisdom in ensuring that the person who's come in and discussed this with you, their trust in you should not be violated. Secondly, they should not be in a worse danger of before they actually came and told you. So that's something you need to ensure. Okay? All right? Okay. Um, again, the, po the point is to keep this conversation absolutely confidential, which means you're not, you, you, don't have the, you don't have the right to actually talk about this to even others, you know, any, anyone else, maybe in your team or any of that, not to really talk about this. Okay. So Jackin's written, if the person who abuses is one of the trusted close circle of the child, then how do we protect the child as, as in when they are scared of even staying at home, especially the child being fearful and has no one else? How can we assist as a counselor? In that case, do we do the reporting or connect them directly to some child welfare organization? Yes. So if you if you have seen that, let's say the child is only with the it's, it's a close member of the family, and that's the only person in the house, um, and the child has fear, the, the thing to do is to report. Uh, you can actually directly, there are numbers that you can directly report. Um, uh, it was 1098. Now that number has changed. I've, I'm sorry, I can't recollect what it is. But you can actually directly report to the, uh, to the concerned uh, uh, welfare system. And they will immediately get the child out into a safe space. Okay. Now, I, I want you all also to remember that um, 
you know, here, especially in India, when a child is rescued, they are put into what you care as child care CCIs, child care institutes, okay, to keep them safe. But those child care institutes often are also very, very in extremely bad condition, right? And they are quite uh, emotionally and physically very, very um, run down. And actually, th there isn't much of support that is there, right? So maybe one of the best things for us to do is, yes, we may need to do the reporting, but basically to find if there is someone else within the family that could take the child rather than the child going into a child care institute because they will be there till let's suppose a child is alone right in the house with the parent there isn't anyone else then that's the place that they go to so because we know the affair of a child care institute we've got to be careful if there are other family members or any of that it's always best that they go you know to some family members distant family members house Till the person or the abuser can get that support and that kind of help. Okay, I'm just telling you that is because the child care institutes in India are very, very, uh, they're they're very poor in itself. You know, there can be a lot of abuse that happens there also, right? And a lot of mental trauma and and all of that. But nevertheless, if there isn't a way out, that's the only thing to do. But I'm just just giving you a thought. Okay. Um, yeah. Then um, uh, the, the the question of if what happens if the person chooses to return home against your violence uh, against your advice, what do you do is make sure that you you give them uh, ways of how you can be contacted, right? So that in case they go against your advice, they will be able to reach out to you and you will be able to follow up in some way. Um, remember, you cannot force anyone to make a decision that they should be doing themselves. The only decision that you can you can take is when uh, it's a child, OK? When Because they're not an adult, they're not a major, they do not have may probably the capacity to think or to do things for themselves. That's the only time that you can take um, you know, some kind of active step otherwise when it is an adult ensure that you're empowering them to do what they need to okay all right uh, when we come back we'll just talk about how a couple of things of how christian counseling can help especially survivors um, that is people who've gone through abuse are not in that abusive uh, environment anymore it must have been a thing of the childhood or of the past but are carrying significant burdens or hurt as a result of that. OK? All right. Um, we'll close for 10 minutes, we'll, uh, and we'll come back after 10 minutes at 11 o'clock for, for the second part of our class. Mm -hmm.